a vast landscape of video games, Immortal Life has emerged as another cozy farming sim, offering players a captivating journey through 10 enchanting realms. But does Immortal Life stand on its own, or does it blend into the vastly growing amount of farming simulators? Let's get right into it. Hi gamers, it's your host Stormy, and today we are taking a look at Immortal Life by Yifang Studios, releasing out of early access today, January the 17th, on PC, at a retail price point of $16.99. Immortal Life has been in early access for quite some time now, and I was lucky enough to be able to play the finalized version early, and I have a lot to say. Immortal Life is a captivating life simulation game where you strive to restore the Ji Yoon sect after its near total destruction, all while trying to achieve immortality through spiritual cultivation. I would like to first of all point out that this game has an insane amount of content. Even in just the demo alone that they previously had available, it seemed endless which is a good thing considering it's at a lower price point, but just keep that in mind as I go through the video, I'm gonna try to touch on as many features as I possibly can. Your character has decided to help your brand new brothers and sisters make their settlement grow and flourish into a prosperous village. You will work relentlessly with them to restore the Misty Valley by farming, cooking, crafting, decorating, and more. As you strengthen your bonds with them, you will learn more about their lives, stories, and motivations. As I ventured deeper into Immortal Life, I couldn't help but marvel at the visual and auditory symphony that is this game. The character designs were not just pixels on a screen, they're genuinely a work of art, each detail a testament to the creator's passion and talent. The Chinese mythology-inspired graphics, art, and music was such an impressive part of the game. Now let's take a look at what a typical day in this game will be. Main quests will push forward the main storyline of rebuilding the town, while side quests add layers of depth to the narrative. The majority of these quests are fetch quests, but honestly, they switch it up enough to where it doesn't really bother me. The map unfolds into 10 different realms, each offering a unique adventure with daily activities, ranging from tending crops to engaging in combat, crafting potions, decorating your house, and so much more. In this magical realm, your character does not have a specific bedtime or really any time penalty at all. You can go to sleep whenever you want and stay out all night if you choose to. The absence of sleep requirement is liberating, granting players the freedom to explore, quest, and live in the world without the nagging reminder of a bedtime penalty. You will lose stamina as you do things throughout the day, but other than that, you will not be penalized. You can use spells to assist you in the daily tasks like harvesting your crops, watering them, and so on. I love this little magical touch because I know as good as anyone how monotonous watering each individual plant can get so it's really cool to have these little features help with all of these daily duties one of the most unique aspects of the day-to-day -day life in immortal life is the cooking aspect Wow, I am so excited to see a fun cooking mini game. The game is almost in the style of Overcooked, where you need to do different steps for different dishes. I love the idea of being able to come cook things to give to the townspeople when I get bored of just, you know, the normal farming sim tasks. Fishing in this game is also very simple once you get the hang of it. You can see here in my clip, it took me quite a few tries to actually understand what they were asking asking me to do, but once I got the hang of it, I never messed it up again. It's also really relaxing because the scenery in these fishing areas is just beautiful. You can decorate your house, craft potions, and so much more. Are you catching on to what I said earlier that this game just has an endless amount of content to give us? I could go on and on about each individual feature but we will genuinely be here all day if I do that. The combat in this game is really cute. You have different levels of dungeons to clear, and the actual monsters themselves are adorable. 
you'll have a weapon as well as equippedable spells to add to your weapon. This gives you the ability to customize your combat experience more than what you would usually get in your cozy game, and I really enjoyed that little detail. Now, of course, no magical journey is without its quirks. The controls in this game initially take some getting used to. The game is optimized for controller, so I did try to switch to controller assuming that it would be easier, but even the controller options feel really weird. You do have the option to reassign your key bindings, so it's not a make it or break it type of problem, but it certainly took some getting used to and felt really odd. Another thing that was not my favorite is there are moments of abrupt loading screens that have absolutely no background noise during them. Silence reigns, and for a brief moment, you're pulled from the immersive embrace of the game. Awkward, yes, but again, not something earth-shattering. I just wish we had some type of background music or something so that these loading screens were not so awkward. I do also wish the interface was a bit more smooth. I found myself clicking back and forth between the quests letters, and maps way more than I would have liked. It just requires a lot of looking back and forth between several pages, which is not always going to be ideal. In the end, Immortal Life is a fantastic game with a ton of content, and I absolutely believe that you are getting your money's worth with this one. Not only does the game run incredibly smooth, but also has gorgeous graphics, a beautiful sound design, and a sense of individuality as it focuses on its Chinese fantasy themes. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Are you going to be picking this one up? Did you play it in early access? Was this a game that you were anticipating? Feel free to let me know. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed your time here and want to see more indie game coverage. As always, thank you all so much for the endless support, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye!